was like, well, you know where your grandfather went. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, found, I found his master's thesis in the Ag Library. Really? That was cool. Wow. Nick, welcome. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Good. Yourself? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Just trying to figure out my pod so I can hear you guys over here. That's how you do it. Yep. What else we got here? Is um is 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 Gene McBride actually Gina Sullivan? No, it's Gene McBride. By the way, um, my name's Brian. Have we met? Yeah. Um, I took pictures of you two days ago. You're the you were you were with the, the Essence Reporter. Yeah. Yes. Welcome. Thanks. Yes. Nice. Uh, all right. We still have one minute until we start. How are you doing, Sharon? How are you doing, Robin? Hey, Brian. Welcome, everybody. Let's see if I get this agenda up. Although, what, what is a... <laughs> Uh, it's been so long since we've had uh, more than three members. Is what, What's a quorum with four? I don't even know. This is the only meeting I use Teams for, so it's uh, just trying to find where all the, you know, the same functionality is in Zoom is always fun. Sh share content, share screen. It is, it looks like. Is that the only thing on that screen? Ooh. That was weird. There you go. Looks good. All right, down in the corner, we have an agenda. Everyone knows that stuff. Um, what we don't have is a quorum. Unless people are waiting in the lobby. No Jeff yet. Or a Tatanisha. All right. A bunch of people, again, I apologize for being unfamiliar with uh, Teams. Did just have... That's go. okay. I don't know it like I know Zoom. Me. Here, yeah. I'm right in the same boat. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to Tanisha. Good morning. One after we have a quorum, um, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, especially as soon as I admit Whitney. All right, welcome Whitney. Hi, how's it going? All right. That is, I'm going to call this meeting to order as soon as I can remember how to record it. Teams. We don't have, um, let Sharon and Robin know how to do this since you guys do this all the time. Do what? Turn on recording in Teams. Okay, recording done. You recording it? No teams is. Ah, uh, nice. Oh, wait a minute. I'm hitting it and it won't let me. Oh, it's recording yes. now. Okay. It has started. Thank you. So, yes. 
started. Thank you. Just behave yourself from now on, Brad, okay? Uh, always, always. Um, all right, it's 8.03, and I'm going to uh, call this meeting of the Essex Economic Development Commission to order. Welcome, everyone. Um, am, I still sharing, am I still sharing the agenda? No. Um, well, um, it's not a very complicated agenda, so so give me a shout if you have any questions. Um, my first first thing is, do we have any uh, updates to the agenda? Um, if anyone did, the um, Tatanisha and Nick, did you see anything that um, was not there and that you wanted to add? No, we didn't. I liked it. Okay. Aha. We have the we have the room, including Gene, and that looks like Jeff. Welcome. Um, all right. So there are not seeing any updates to the agenda. The next item on our agenda is public to be heard. We have um, a couple members of the public. Um, are there? Would anyone like to take this opportunity to speak? All right. Hearing none. Um, uh, we don't. We don't actually have any minutes to approve, um, of which I'm aware. Is that right, Tatanisha and Jeff? I think we were all caught. I think we're all caught up, right? Jeff, are you nodding? Yes. We're, we're, now, we're now unmuted. We're now unmuted. We're good. Very good. Very good. So. Um, um, just, oh, I'm sorry, um, Ms. McBride, McBride, you have a question. Maybe I skipped you in public. Uh, it's more of um, an observation. Um, I don't think you're recording right now. You don't think we're recording? Sorry. Yeah. Are you supposed yes, we are. To yeah, someone wants to start a recording. <clears throat> it just doesn't say at the top, but maybe I'm wrong. There's on my computer. Oh, yeah, okay. it's on my as well, on my phone. Okay, never mind. Yeah, we okay. Also. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Uh, thanks for the heads up. I think um, I, I do see it, so I'm um, um, not sure what the difference is on your computer, but. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so for section five of the agenda, this is actually a, the idea of Nic Nicolette, if I'm pronouncing her name right, who um, owns um, um, Egress, the um, the new um, lingerie store in the Essex Experience. Um, the, uh, March is was uh, Women's History Month, and we have a nice little uh, a nice little row, Essex Small Business, uh, uh, Women Owned Business row in in, um, yes, in the Essex Experience, which is the rest, which is um, um, Salt and Bubbles, which is um, um, the market on the corner, and um, Uncommon Coffee. So um, seemed like this would be a good time to um, that that um, and uh, I've spoken to half of them, um, and they're in. Um, if we wanted to, um, you know, pr promote some of the some of the strong small businesses that we have here in Essex. Um, you know, Brian, we could put we could put up a banner on the Essex website on our on the economic development website. You know, celebrating them and asking every every other woman on this to please get in touch with us so we can we can celebrate them and their and and support them. And that might be a good outreach project. Right. Well, I think I think that leads back to um, that there are many, um, as I'm sure that uh, Whitney and Sam are going to talk about. Um, there's there's um, lots of uh, uh, grants and et cetera that are specific to BIPOC owned and, and um, women owned businesses. And um, if we knew who more of them were in Essex, this would this would um, be a way to um, you know, to, to make sure that we had that that box ticked off in the business centers that we're working on. So, and I have come up with a big zero with ACTD about them telling me the list of BIPOC businesses because I know they have the list. I just haven't been able to get it from. Hmm. Whitney, do you want to jump in here on this discussion? Um, yeah. So none of the RDCs have a list from ACTD for BIPOC businesses as well. Um, we're doing this grant we've been trying to pull together as many lists as we can so the best thing that we have found as the rdc's is to go through the vermont professionals of color network directory uh on their website they do have a directory of self-identified um 
by Bob owned businesses. So that's where I would recommend that you start. That's where we're all sort of combing through. Um, there is a map that you can, you know, I pulled it countywide um, for our work, but you can search just Essex um, and pull up. You sent me that link. This is in your region. I guess, I guess my, if you hear a point of annoyance, the fact of the matter is that I know they have that list. Tough. But they, because when I put the $5 million grant in, not the $150,000 grant we're working on now, but when I did the $5 million grant, we hired someone to reach out to BIPOC owned businesses and they created a list. I am uh, I am marginally annoyed that I can't get my hands on it because it should be a public document. But it does say something very clearly about that particular agency's behavior around BIPOC and women owned businesses. They pay no attention. Yes, they will come. Well, we can have, you know, maybe Fred can get through or something. We can try and. Yeah. Come through a different angle. The whole, the whole, the whole plan of the original bill with the first chunk of COVID money was to get that list up and operative, and that that was the whole my whole plan behind it. And I moderate frustrated that they have not done that, but I will not give up because I'm relentless. <laughs> <laughs> really relentless. So, but okay. I'll, but I'm working on I'm working on that on the on the my, uh, on your list you sent me to get to reach out to those businesses. Well, I think that's I think that's good, but I'm thinking that that's sort of um, the next agenda item. That's sort of a side effect, um, a good side effect of um, what uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this promotion. Um, if um, but uh, if if we uh, but I sort of wanted to get a. Um, uh, a consensus of the commission that this is a good good use of our time and effort. So, um, if you guys want to, not a formal vote here, but if you guys want to give me your opinion. So, Brian, are, are you looking? Uh, you mentioned a couple of places in the experience. So I, I assume that we're expanded beyond just the experience and in the four or five businesses there. Are are you looking to target certain ones, or are you looking for all of Essex? I mean, I. I think that we, I think that um, that story is is nice, right? Just because they're all neighbors, right? And you know, and they're all, it's all we have kind of Essex small, uh, you know, Essex women-owned business row, right? Um, and you know, that story will help us, um, you know. Um, so I like the story. I don't believe that it, I'm, I'm not intending to be exclusionary. I'm not sure that I am. Um, are you Are you telling me that that's how it's coming across? No. Well, I mean, I know the examples you use. I, I'm not. I'm not saying there's anything about that. You mentioned four, and I also know there's Magic Man on the other side. I believe there's Purple Sage at, at the end. So the newer ones, are we focusing on the, the new ones that are you know, just making their way into the community, or are we expanding uh, uh, beyond to established ones? Uh, I just want to know where, we're, where our focus are, uh, where our focus is, if it's just on some of the newer established businesses or the, the ones that are just getting into the community rather than uh, ones that have been established for a while. Yeah, I, mean, I just I want to know your context. Yeah, I mean, I mean my, my context is was was just to, um, you know, you know, leverage the idea that it's Women's History Month and then we have all these women owned businesses. So I mean, it's, it's true that there's some across the street as well. Um, I mean, I would uh, you know, if we had a if we had a full time media team, right? Then you're right. We should expand it to Magic Man. We should expand it to Purple Purple Sage. You know, um, that. But um, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah. So I thought that that um, a like Gene's idea to um, you know to um, put to um, push it as a you know as a uh, as, as an example and. Um, and, and we could we could start from there, because um, because also one of the things I wanted to talk about today is like yeah I'd like to, I'd love to promote this on our Twitter handle and our Instagram feed, none of which we have, right? So, um, but but you know and also if um, the commission thinks this is a this is a dumb idea, then you know we we shouldn't set that stuff up. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean I, I think it's a great idea. I just I wanted to know where where we how far we went with it. You know, um, if if we're really if we want to do an in depth look at 
these newer businesses that are just coming on board from salt and bubbles to, you know, the, the, the ones in that row, Uncommon Coffee, you know, Uncommon Coffee and Magic Man, I think, started about the same time. Why would we include one and not the other? That, that's where I didn't know where the cutoff was with who are we are including in that in that row, um, in that in in the experience. So yeah, I, I, I just didn't want anyone to look at that article and feel like they were excluded. Um, we could reach out to Ryan, who, is, who works with with, with Peter Edelman, who is sort of his aide de camp, and we can get every every woman of the that would be just as easy. We could do that, and we, and we could just we could feature it as this is this is a the Essex experience is a particular area where women owned businesses are are are, are, are thriving, really. Are, right, yeah, and then. And then we and do the outreach and say, but we want to know every woman owned business in Essex. We want you to reach out, talk to us. We've got programs. We've got, and it would be a good way of highlighting the programs that they're rolling out because what the programs are that they're rolling out that are incredible is it's technical assistance. Mm -hmm. It's getting them up on the web. It's getting you know it, it's working with the businesses to really expand their reach, and it's 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 a, it's a very good pro so. We can we can highlight the experience, and the more people we have in the experience, the better. And then we can, using that as a jumping off space, highlight the need for to know for women in bike and their businesses, so they can come up, come to us, so we can get them the information for the program. Yeah, I think I think that's a, a good approach, uh, Brian, just to kind of expand up. And let's use the experience, it's you know the entire experience, uh, as like the initial impetus for this yeah um, for this outreach so here's what we have and even if we do want to put some some of these are are new in the last six months that you may or may not know about here's a little bit of a blurb about some of the brand new ones that are women owned and then and then like Jean said we can say and we know our community has others yeah so feel free to you know, to come on down and talk to us because we've, we've, got, we've got stuff we want to work with you on. Mm -hmm. And I think Brian's idea, I mean, I, I think the book, which I love, is the the, the locality of all of these women in the business at, at the experience. I think that's, yeah. and that's, that's kind of the book. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems to me like, um, especially with the, the caveat that uh, you're that, 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 that I just articulated poorly, but um, but Gene was on, right? Um, that um, that um, yes, there are more. We want to know. We want to know more. We're not we're not picking on these these people, uh, but um, we um, it also gives us a gives us a chance to help um, flesh out our um, you know our our channels for our communication channels, like um, you know like the EDC website, which you know hasn't changed you know at all. It probably probably still says any Hooper, right? So that, that, that the next. Next meeting, we will be. I, my agenda item for the next meeting is discussing this content on the website. Also, I have a Twitter and an Instagram account that I typically for us haven't created yet. But I've got that and I've got a Facebook page up. All of us. And, and so I, I, wanted, and I, I wanted to get more direction as to what I should be tweeting about and Instagram. About. Down. Yeah. Well, I mean, um... and I understand Tammy. One of Tammy's roles in the new, newly reformed government is going to be communication. So I'll bring it up. I'm going to reach out to her about her communication on the town of Essex and everything else, so we can coordinate what we do with Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. But we do, we do need to be up and uh, up and running on that. Or that Instagram, we think we can showcase like a particular person and just put their business oh, in there yeah. with their face, yeah. what they do, and everything else. It's like a profile. Yeah. So we'll just showcase um, every other day or every week or oh, something. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah I think that may be where Brian was going originally. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That, that's where we're starting with his, um, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. I think that this is a um, a uh, step step towards. Um, I actually like Tatanisha's idea better than mine, um, but uh, um, but uh, uh, but we, but we need to sort of exercise our our tech skills and um, and our accounts and stuff to make sure that they work. 
Um, so this is sort of the impetus yeah, to get that started. Um, um, are, you, are you using your hands, Sam, or are you trying to keep your dog from barking? Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sam. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, Nick just wanted to. You, you, are, are you good with this high-level plan? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I really like the high-level plan. Um, you know, as far as creating more channels for communication, I think that's really valuable. Um, to Gene's point, I mean, I think it was really good to just reach out to all the businesses. 150k in grants is a lot of money, so I think when it comes to meeting with these businesses, uh, just figuring out, you know, what are their capital requirements, what do they need, and then how is how does this grant, how does this money translate into future cash flows? Um, so how is it going to help them grow their business? Um, and if they can have, you know, ballpark figures on that, I think that just makes allocating that cash uh, much easier and much fairer. Nick, I love, can I just say, I've, I spent 20 years on, on being a financial advisor, but so I started out with Merrill and ended up, ended up on my own business. It's so nice to have someone from my, from my world back on the, on the board, because I love the ROI, the whole issue, it's lovely. <laughs> Thanks. Happy to help. Nice. You're speaking my language. <laughs> well, I'm hearing a, I'm hearing a consensus that this is um, that this is a good plan. That um, that uh, y'all are happy with uh, Gene and I working together to stand up kind of the website and some of these presences, uh, uh, these internet presences. Um, um, but the only kind of uh, my only sort of question is on um, Tanisha's suggestion. I mean, given infinite time and money, I think we go with Tanisha's, and we do like you know, like we do first we do um, you know first we do Nicolette, then we do then we do Kayla, right? Nicolette is um, Lee Press, and then, um, Kayla is Salt and Bubbles. Then we do um, um, and I forget the, the the then we do Magic Man. Um, so, but and th that would be a lovely sort of weekly kind of promotion, especially for um, for Women's History Month. Uh, but uh, I'm not uh, I'm not sure what everybody's bandwidth is here, including Jeans here. So, what, do you guys have a preference about how we go about this, or are you guys willing to let us let us do this over EDC, you know, letterhead kind of thing? You know, like use our judgment based on our time and and uh, and the and the um, the business owners' time, no less. I'm fine with that. I'm good. Yeah, I'm fine with trusting you. <laughs> Well, you're in deep trouble now, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <talking> <laughs> You'd be surprised that not everyone feels that way about me, Jeff. I was talking to Gene. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. That sounds like that sounds like consensus. I'm not sure we need a vote. Does anybody? Does anyone, a parliamentarian in, in the house, um, agree, disagree with me? All right. Here, hearing none, then um, Gene, you and I will, uh, you and I will chat, and we'll, um, we'll do this thing. I spoke to Kay. I spoke to Kayla yesterday, so um, we can um, get moving on this um, offline. And I love, I love the the weekly, the highlighting. It's, it's a, um, there are certain times you post on, 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 on Instagram and Twitter that hits better, and a weekly post is a really good plan. And did you, and you just get it up and running all the time? Perfect. Uh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, so I probably should have done partner updates above this uh, this discussion with the commission because we have very patient partners here. So, um, but that's next item on our agenda. Um, first in my screen is Whitney. If you wanted, to, if um, you wanted to, um, you know, to take over um, Sam's points, but even though she's your boss. <laughs> we uh, we split it up today, so. Um... I will be talking about, which we've already heard about a bunch, the Community Navigator pilot program, which the RDCs are doing um, technical assistance grants. And um, I guess give you guys an update since you last spoke. So it is, the grants are partially open, um, but they are only open right now to BIPOC women in veteran-owned businesses. And so we've been doing outreach based on um, basically scavenging across the, the world for these lists of people, which has not been easy, but we've 
compiled, I think I have a list of around 100 businesses in Chittenden County that fit those um, requirements. And so we've been emailing out and communicating and um, we're not the navigator. There's one for our region um, in central Vermont who is actually doing all the intake and matching up the businesses with the technical assistance. And so we get updates from her um, regularly and we have six Chittenden County businesses currently um, either approved or in the process of getting approval. And yesterday after this update, Sam and I did see a couple more coming through, um, which I'm not sure if they'll get accepted or not, but people are definitely taking advantage. Um, the grant sizes, I think the average grants going to be about $4,000. And um, they, we will be opening up the portal to all businesses uh, beginning on March 14th. And in advance of that, there's a webinar on March 9th. So we'll be communicating with our larger list of Chittenden County businesses um, prior to the ninth to make sure people can get signed up. Um, the question before that point is going to be how much funding is still available before we open it up because we don't want to blast out to a thousand people and then have it be like there's you know three more grants available. So that's sort of where the process that Sam and I are in is sort of waiting after this last we did a big push yesterday and seeing what comes through in the next week and then reevaluating our outreach because we don't want people to be disappointed who um put in the work to apply and then there's not funding left so that's sort of the the dance we're in right now you have to remember that uh, there are 12 rdc's and the anticipation is the money will be spread throughout the state. So although we could here in Chittenden County probably leverage all the funds, we won't be allowed to because of the other regions in the state of Vermont have to be able to access the money as well. And we've not been told how that's breaking down yet. And it's net only 150 for the state, right? Yeah, 150 um, for the northern region and 150 for the southern region. Oh, okay. So it's been divided, the six northern RDCs yeah. and the six southern RDCs. Okay, good. Okay. So doesn't matter if they have storefronts because I know a couple of people that started their businesses, they cook and it's online. So are those, um, can they apply as well? Yeah. I'm having trouble hearing you, sorry. Right. Sorry, hold on. I'll, I'll put it in my earpiece because I still have you on here. Oh, wonderful. The masks okay. make it tricky. <laughs> so, so I, I was because uh, they are uh, online. I know, I know a couple of people and they have, and they have their business Jean, um, online. They go sorry through. to interrupt them. Jean, can you mute the room while Tatsunisha is speaking, please? There's a tech woman here. Oh. Hello? 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 Uh, they well, two two of them started their business already, and they came. You know what? Let me hold on. Hold on. There. Yeah. Okay, now that now the room is probably is, needs to be unmuted. Thank you, Jean. So, I know a couple of people that do catering, and they deliver their foods. They started their business. Their, their bipod. So okay. um, I wanted to know um, when this was put out, where was it put out at? And because I can send it to her so she can apply because she needs oh, help. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would um, be fantastic. I can send you um, the the application link 
is not just on the website right now. Um, it is like a link that we're emailing around so that we don't get flooded by non-eligible applicants. Okay. So they may have already received an email from me, but if they haven't, I would love for you to pass this link on. So um, if Brian, maybe you could send me your email or um, Jean, I'm not sure I have your email. So maybe if someone could send that to me after, I would love to give you the information. No, I would just tell you now. Hold on. Get a little paper going. <laughs> okay. There is a requirement, right, Whitney, for when they form their business. There's a date requirement. She's been in the business for about a year to two years. So. Okay. okay. I think it's right. 2020. Okay. Yeah. So it's um, T A T A R E E D. I T T A at gmail.com. Can you just say it one more time for me? T A T A. Uh huh. R E D E, as in David, David, I times times A at gmail.com. I sent both of you. I sent both of you an email in another window. So in case you okay. didn't. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tatanisha. Yeah, oh, nice. Okay. What a great idea, Tatanisha. Thank you. We'll reach out to those. We'll reach out to them. Okay. Nice. Nice. Um, all right. Any, anything more on the um, partner on the uh, community navigator, uh, Whitney? I don't think so. We'll be continuing to reach out as we um, move forward, but. That's sort of where we're at now. So thank you, and I'll pass it over to Sam. Um, yes, as you all know, the legislature is on town week recess. When they come back, they have a very busy week because they have crossover on the 11th, which means they have to cross over the bills from the House to the Senate and likewise from the Senate to the House. Um, there are a number of bills up for discussion for funding. The SIP, the Capital Investments Program, still has not allocated uh, funding yet for the first round applicants. We can't share who, but we can tell you there were entities in Essex that applied, but the federal government hadn't completed its rules. And now there is a lengthy discussion on whether the legislature will exclude what they had included last year on net fiscal impact. Um, and it looks like they may do that, which would be very helpful, um, but it's being held up. And I'm sure that's frustrating um, for the businesses who apply. There's also remote worker and workforce and marketing uh, grant funds that are being discussed in the legislature. There'll be an omnibus economic development bill but as of right now to go over the details they all could shift after crossover so it would be an exercise in frustration right now um, <laughs> we we do watch it very closely but i can assure you it changes on an almost daily basis Jean will remember that. Oh no! Um, I got a shopping. I, I've got. I've got a shopping list of everything from the T-bill on down of money that we could get our hands on, and I've not shared it with anyone because we all know it can change in a minute. So right. First of all, I got to see if it goes through the crossover, and then we figure out where it goes from there. Right, and then it can. Um, the big ones can very likely go um, to conference committee. Oh, yeah. And uh, the budget, the money bills won't come in till the won't cross over till the week of the 14th. Right. 
Right. Um, all the bills that will cross over on the 11th um, are not money bills. So we're daily watching it like Gene is, but there's nothing we can share that's concrete right now. And that's our report. <laughs> and for Nick's edification, because we haven't met Whitney and I, Nick, are staff with GBIC, the Greater Burlington Industrial Corporation. We're one of the 12 regional development corps that are known as RDCs that exist throughout Vermont. And RDCs is Regional Development Corp, right? Right, right. Very good. Thank you, Sam. Uh, um, who, next on my screen is uh, Robin Pierce. If you had any partner updates. Um, uh, something for people to think about. Um, looking a bit outside our boundaries, so to speak. There's a state rail plan. It relates to the Boston and Montreal connection. What the state are proposing is a train that goes to Springfield, Massachusetts. You can get off, and if you're really lucky, there's another train waiting on you that takes you to Boston. Maybe it's really efficient, maybe it's not, not from that perspective. At the moment, the state this year is going to give $8.75 million to Amtrak, bring two trains to Vermont, each coming to a small community rather than going to Montreal. Um, there's a second option that the state hasn't really looked at terribly carefully. Their plan at the moment would mean it would take oh, uh, seven hours to get from Essex Junction to Boston. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm thinking of a bus or driving, I'm not going to take a seven hour train. Exactly. It hasn't changed. There's another option that would get you from Essex Junction to Boston in three and a half hours. That is that. Think about that in terms of Waterbury, ski resorts, if somebody's in Boston and here it's snowing in Vermont, for a chance they're going to take on the train. There was 60 miles of track that was lifted by a former uh, rail company. So there's 60 miles of track missing. The state of New Hampshire owned the right-of-way, which is often, as I find out with the connector road, the hardest thing to get. So there's an opportunity to look at a second option. If they put in the second rail line, it'd be one train actually from Montreal to Boston, not along Essex Junction, no getting off, no waiting for a second train. The current plan, you get off in Springfield, then you go west, then you go south, then you go east. Um, doesn't make any sense to me. And it sounds more like a political promise than an economic promise. Yeah. But if they reinstated the rail line for the more direct route, in New Hampshire it would help Nashua, Manchester, West Lebanon, and Concord. And overall, it would help Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Quebec. So it's a, you know, the real journey would take 10, 11 hours uh, to get from Boston to Montreal. If they went the more direct route, it would take five and a half hours. None of this makes any sense. I mean, we have to have our Delegate congressional delegation speaking New Hampshire. I think the towns that could be impacted and officially should all be talking to each other between New Hampshire and Vermont. It just, you know, we're setting ourselves up for failure again. We're setting ourselves up for pain. 8.75 million and increasing every year if we take this route rather than doing a little bit harder work at the start to get the more, the better connected route. As I like to say, as Jeff K said, we don't do it because it's easy, we do it because it's hard. And once the track was in, it's probably expensive, but once the track was in, everything changes. It's good for business, it's good for the environment. It's very rare that you know, personal choice coincides with what's good for the environment. This is an opportunity, we shouldn't let it go. Robin spot on, Robin is spot on about this, and the airport has struggled for years with the Boston Air, with the Boston connection, and it's never done particularly well. A rail connection it, with that with, with three and a half to four hours, 
would would change the entire scope of what's going on in terms of bringing people to ethics and bringing people all along that route. And it's a, because I just <clears throat> had to go to Boston. So right. I was trying to get there and I was going to take the train. But then I was looking like, what is going on? Why well, I got to wait the whole day? Yeah. So that would be perfect. And I did not feel good. So I had to drive there. So um, that would be a lot. And I still have to track it back and forth. So that would be perfect for them to, you know, for us to do three hours because it's three hours to get there. So why should it take long? So where's the home? What, what, what can we do? Um, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I think we start by making connections with other towns. I mean, a lot of this stuff flies under the radar. Oh, okay. um, you know, even our um, energy committee should be looking at this. There's a lot less pollution with the train than there is for, you know, what would a train hold? 400 people, four per car, it's 100 cars. A lot less pollution and um, a lot less wear and turn the roads as well. Plus, it won't be too long before trains come with that. Roofs that are all solar panels. So, vote on this. Um, how do we do? You know, how do we speak to people? You know, I'm just we have to go through different channels, but you know, can we put that on a, a part of the agenda to let us know what we need to do to get our opinions or, or you know, so so they can think about different things. Well, I think we have to get the word out. Uh, Gene and I are meeting with um, the legislators on Monday. And I'm going to hand my distance sheet that I put together. Um, I don't think I have everybody's email, but I'll send it to Brian and he can distribute. And uh, yeah, I think I think we can connecting with various. I think we should connect with write a letter to the other town, and and in a formal way, because that will start things going on. Yeah. And then, in that process, copy all of our our federal delegation, and copy the New Hampshire federal delegation, and start the ball rolling that way. Then their their folks on the ground, every every the, the reps and the senators people on the ground, will then get in touch with us because we're now moving on something. Yeah. And it's interstate, so I think that's I think that's the way to do it. And I'm glad Robin brought up Monday. So Monday we've got. Uh, three of our five legislators are coming to, uh, you know, I've got three so far. Um, uh, I have not heard back from Melissa, but three of our five legislators are coming to coffee tomorrow, uh, on Monday morning at, from 8.30 to 9.30. Okay. Here. And coffee and chocolate, Jane. Coffee, yeah, right, coffee and chocolate. So we're going to do coffee and chocolate and then just to meet the staff, meet us, meet the committee, and say, let us help you in what you're doing. None of them are on committees that deal with anything. Okay. And, the, and they've got a bunch of Act 250 stuff they got to vote on, and no one's on that committee. Okay. And we've got plenty of staff that can help them navigate that. And so I, I thought get, getting everyone together and meeting the new town manager and meeting that, our committee. And that's Monday? Next Monday. Okay. Kind of a big street. Okay. And I think I like Robert's plan. I think we should, I think we should start writing to the town and try to convene a meeting and start kick up a little dust and see what happens. Exactly. Because we just don't want to do something and we and it's unusable, you yeah. know. And it's 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 just for the money. You know, and trying to get they need to be. And trains, as Robert said, trains are the key to our future. Yeah, because I, I don't really fly, so that's what I was saying when I first got here trying to get back to Michigan, and it was just so... Yeah. There you go. Um, Jean, do you have a template for this letter that we can... Um, that well, Robin and I will come up with it. <laughs> it's something that we can put our names on as, yeah, you we'll, know, supported by the EDC. Yeah. We'll write it up, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come up with, a, we'll come up with that, that in the list. And we'll get it circulated, circulated around. I would also recommend that you copy Joe Flynn, who's yeah. the secretary of the Agency of Transportation. Yeah, yes. Joe, Joe knows all about it. 
I've spoken to him. I also spoke to Dick Mazza. I got friendly smiles. Okay. Good. <laughs> I'm just Robin, not get friendly smiles. <laughs> you're lucky you're not in the same office as me, Jeff. That's all I'm saying. But um, <laughs> you know, the Village Station is actually the busiest train station in Vermont. We are not on the Vermont Rail Council. I've suggested to the trustees that maybe one of them should be on the Vermont Rail Council. If you're not at the table, you don't get to speak. None of them seem to have the time to do that. Um, where do we sign up for that? Where is that at? Can you email me that? Real Council, you have to be appointed by the governor. And generally, you have to be um, proposed by elected officials in the community you're in. Okay. Just doesn't make any sense to me that um, somebody from Essex Junction is not on the Real Council. Okay. This is a different um, this is a different David Allaire than my next door neighbor. I'm okay. Oh, we'll figure this out. Okay. Well, I'm going to send this in a few minutes to Brian. And um, oh, by the way, before I forget, because one of my sisters contacted me, he may have mentioned I may have missed it, but the 8th of March is International Women's Day. Nice. So maybe you can do something for that and loop it into what Tatanisha was talking about. Good start for, uh, Maybe the Essex reporter can get them to do an article on it and tie it into all the uh, woman, woman and BITOC own businesses. Um, nice. I'm pleased to I'm pleased to see that uh, the Essex reporter is here today. Welcome, oh, Gene. Um, all right. Um, thank you, Robin. Yeah. Anything else? I'm looking at the clock here, so. All right. Well, I think uh, ne next on my screen is um, Ms. Sullivan. Oh, we're talking the list. Okay. So, so what we've got so far, I was talking to Jeff about this. So what we've got so far is I've taken all all of the, the, the three of the four spreadsheets that I got from week are all now combined into a searchable list. So we now have a we now have a searchable list, so we can search by uh, currently by address and soon to be business size. So we can actually search the list that we've got of our current businesses. So it's 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 now functional. Um, there is one list that I can't get my hands on, which is the the Vermont Business Magazine's database it has a killer list, and it has the SIC codes on it and a lot of data about the companies. Most of which I don't necessarily want. I like I, what I really want is this as SIC codes. I'm not willing to ask the next town to spend five hundred dollars to subscribe just to get the SIC codes. So I'm sort of sorting through that. I'm going to see if I can get my hands on that database some other way. Um, what the the question at hand is is because this is a public database, Brian. We've talked about that, and it could open businesses up to if we ask them for too much information. That we're going to make public, if we open them up, they would maybe be reluctant to give us that information. From my perspective, and I'm stealing Jeff's comment, but but from my perspective, I'm chatting with Jeff, primarily, it's how do we contact the business and what do they do, so that when these programs like the the Women in the BIPOC on technical assistance grants come around. I then can access that and get the word out to them. I don't know if, if, and so if that's the case, I can just start getting on the phone and calling these businesses, literally, and just filling out their their contact information and basic information about what do they what do they produce or make, so I can sort sort and how big are they? I can sort them. But is there anything else you, the committee, wants to hear or know about? I'm trying to keep it as generic as possible so we don't open up the businesses to nuisance sales calls. Um, you know, I, th I, I think that's what we've uh, talked about in the past, the contact information and, um, and, you know, and, and industries, you know, if it's, you know, how we get the, whether it's next code or whatever, uh, the, um, my, and also I don't want to let, there's other things we've talked about adding, like size and whether they're hiring. Um, these are things that are all important, but I don't want to let 
I don't want to let the the perfect be the enemy of the good here. So um, I'm happy to do that. Have we gotten? I mean, there are. Um, on the one hand, this is. Um, yeah. On, on the one hand, this is work done by a public commission and should be um, available to the public. On the other hand, there are some. Um, there are some people who will, in fact, use it for solicitations or other use this contact information. Do we have some guidance on um, on what? Um, I mean, so far we have kept it as a as um, a work product for for this reason until we got good guidance. Have we gotten good guidance from um, you know from um, anyone in the anyone in the town, Gene, on what um, you know what 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 we what we can collect and what we because um, I know I know there was for example the town of Essex has phone numbers for voters uh, for some voters. Um, however, they won't give you they don't, they won't give them to you if you ask. Uh, you know which I agree with from a privacy perspective. I didn't know if that that sort of um, distinction was something that we could that, that we should use as well. Should or could. I think it would be good if we if I could call Bill Ellis and ask him to write us a letter describing the, what this list is and what its role is. I think that and then we'd have a legal opinion and that would I think that would be fine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because I, I think it would be, I think we'd have a better, uh, we, we would have a better luck collecting contact information for people who didn't want to get um, various kinds of spam um, if we knew exactly what um, was and wasn't public. Exactly. Okay. And I'll ask, the, the, the question is both uh, available, if, if for a FOIA request, we know, we know what we need to do. And also the question of how available do we have to make this list? We don't necessarily have to publish it. Right. And I'll, 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 I'll get Bill to write a, a letter to us telling us what we can and can't do with the list. And that should cover, again, that costs money, so I just, I, I wanted to wait until we had a conversation before I charged this town with more money. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, that's um. I mean, it sounds like this is Gene, in my opinion, at least. But I want to pull in the commission and see if that's um if they agree with that approach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nick. Sorry, I was on mute. Yep. Okay. Well, very good. Um, cool. And um, yet, uh, thanks for the update on the um, business census or um, whatever we're calling it now. Um, is, did you have anything else, Gene, that you wanted to give us updates about? Um, no, we, but I, I, a forewarning is that I'm going to send around, uh, I've got an email I'm going to send to the, the entire committee on websites, because we've got to talk about what, now that we've sort of sorted out what we're doing with the list, we can finish that off. And now I, I, the next deliver I really want to work on is content on our website. So I'm going to send around before the next meeting websites that all that are around the state and also some around the country that I've looked at for small small cities or small towns like us to kind of look at the content we have on the website and then Brian and I were kind of just chatting the other day about a really cool idea that, that may or may not work but it, I loved it which he was saying you know we could even if people are hiring we could even put a, a, a have a page saying you know, if you're hiring, tell us, and we'll put your we'll put your website, your contact information up, and people can go to the website and say, look, all of these have, these these businesses in Essex are hiring, mm -hmm. and they can click on them and, and look at their websites. Yeah, mm -hmm. and fill out their applications right there. Yeah, even like the Department of Labor and stuff like that. Yeah, we could just get we could just create that as a, and it it would because that would draw people to our website. My hope is is that this will be a website that businesses that are either operating or thinking of operating would go to and find real help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then using the Twitter and the fa Facebook and the Instagram, we can really highlight those businesses. And, you know, advertisement is advertising, you know, it's advertising is money. Yeah. This is, um, this is a uh, good idea. I like the kind of competitive analysis aspect of this, Gene. Um, this sounds like actually a um, um, a good task for like a commission volunteer to uh, take on, as, because especially if you and I are working on the um, setting up the you know the uh, the promotion of uh, women-owned businesses. Yeah, um, that's something that um, Tatanisha or Jeff or uh, or Nick we might want to take take a look at some other competing EDC sites and uh, and see what they have and what what we like and don't like, and maybe so that we 
get give some direction for Essex IT staff? Contribution is very quietly volunteering, so I'm going to amplify the volunteering so it doesn't get lost. I um I, I agree. Anyone who um anyone who volunteers should be praised. So thank you. Yeah, I um I have a lot of ideas for that anyway because when I first came, I was like, where's the website? What is on there? It yeah. says nothing on there. That's right. <laughs> nothing pops. Right. So yeah. Cool. That's. That, I think that'll be super helpful. I'll put like uh, I'll uh, I'll put you on the agenda for our next for our next meeting to give us kind of a summary of your your findings and what findings both from it sounds like you have independent ideas before even looking at the other ones. I want to hear those too. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, but I'll go look at the other ones too. Perfect. Love it. Cool. Um, all right. How does TVIC handle its website? Um, that's just me, uh, updating it as needed. Um, we're not super focused on like social media, website, et cetera. That hasn't ever been Frank's, um, priority, I guess. And so we do a lot more. Our like, email outreach is really our big focus. Oh. Um, I think as a small staff, we wanted to make sure if we did something, we did it really well. And I think our math is that social media is like, if you do it well, it's a big time commitment. Like you don't want to just kind of do stuff like that. You want to be all in. And so I think we try and really build out our email campaigns, keep that list really solid um, and put sort of my uh, web time into, into that world. And then the website is basically like a standing resource that we add things to, but it, it's not like a constantly updating. We send out newsletters quarterly to mm -hmm. our, our list. Well, maybe we should be thinking, so along with the website, because we know we, we know we have to put content on the website because we don't really have content right now. We have, we have stuff, but it's not content. Um, well, it's there. Uh, but maybe we should also be thinking about really when we, with the contact, really getting ourselves organized around the email and our and email because clearly you're working with businesses and what's working for you is email. And so what my takeaway from this conversation is what will probably work better for us is to really focus on the email list and really get that, that up and going well. At the same time, the outreach that we're looking at is basically advertising you know for the instagram facebook and twitter stuff it's all about getting essex on the map and just getting people thinking about us on an advertising standard and the website is for new people primarily and if we can do a couple of pages where people would, would go to it regularly as a as an update that'll be great but really it's the focus should be to reach the businesses that are in existence is focus should be on on email what Websites are informational, who they can contact, for what information. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, all that is marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you've got two parallel tracks. Yeah, and the bread and butter is the email. And the, I mean, like, mm -hmm. right. I would definitely encourage you as well, Matt. My, my background is almost entirely in marketing and if, if you have only some time and resources to put towards something um that's going to be your biggest bang for the buck and then you're building up the resources behind that as well but that's where i would encourage you to um, start your your building thank you all right Thanks, everybody. Um, I don't. Uh, am I missing anyone who has partner uh, partner updates? I think that's everybody. All right. Um, seeing none, um, we've we've been get, we've getting we've been getting on a kind of monthly um, cadence for these meetings, um, especially given that 
um, our important partners such as GBIC, to, um, um, that was more convenient for them. Thank you guys for coming. Um, would, uh, and uh, uh, do, we, do, we, do we think that that's the right cadence, um, commission members? Yes. Um, yes, that's fine. Yep. And, um, and, I, and I apologize for not, um, um, I, I will update the, uh, um, I, I will update the meeting notice for the former um, meeting in the second half, the third week of the month, um, so that it doesn't cause confusion in everyone's calendars. I'm reluctant. <laughs> it was pretty hard to set up, and as Darren will, will attest, so I, um, I'm going to leave it there, but note that it's, um, you know, it's, um, that second meeting is on hiatus. Um, and uh, yeah, so that um, that means our next meeting should be, by my math, uh, Thursday, April seven. Let me double check that I did that right. Yeah, that's why the first the first Thursday in April is the seventh, because Friday is the because uh, April Fool's Day is the first. Um, and uh, with with that, um, I think we have our um, we have our action items, and um, I would accept a motion to adjourn. No more. Okay. All right. Any um, any discussion? Hearing none. All commission members uh, in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 And any opposed? All right. Very good. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Thanks for those partner updates, and uh, looking forward to. Um, um, you know, getting some um, promotion of um, Essex Biz um, out of this commission. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. All right. There's a trick to stop this recording and then cancel. Robin, do you have to do you have to stop the recording? <laughs>